So today, we're going to be taking a look at this Toyota Fila wagon. Now, it's going to be more of an overview because this vehicle has been on the market for quite some time now. So most people should be familiar with it. But I'm still going to do an overview of it. This is the hybrid version. It's also one of those that were built on the 160 platform. In fact, this is the facelift version of the original E160 platform that came out sometime around 2011, 2012. Now, this is how it goes. You have the 141 Fielder Wagon, which is definitive. This is 141. And then after that, the replacement on the E160 platform came this. Now, this is what most people call the E161 or the 161 field wagon. But within this generation, you had the facelift, which is this. Now, the biggest difference that you can see on the outside has to do with the front bumper and the headlights. Everything else remains practically the same. But we're going to be taking a look at the facelift version of the 161 field wagon. One thing I've always admired and loved has to be this black grille in front here. It kind of reminds me of the Mitsubishi Lancers and the Evolutions, how they have that black grille in front. You get it in white with this black grille. It looks really really nicely this one doesn't have the fork lights on it but obviously you can put it in after the fact moving on to the wheels you have bare bones 185 60 15 wheels steel rims with hubcaps now i was never a fan of steel rims or hubcaps until owning my field wagon that came with them and then i understand the beauty of not having to worry about buying flashy rims that bent at the first sign of a pothole you could put these steel rims through practically almost anything within reason of course and they will stand up to the test. Not saying you will go down in random potholes aimlessly, but if your random pothole does sneak up on you, you don't have to worry about it. When it comes to the trunk space, you get what you would expect in a wagon. Like I said, I have a Fila wagon, and I once placed an entire mini fridge at the rear here to help a friend move. Obviously, this divider folds away, and you could fold your rear seat down, and you get even more space. This could be a bed. You are working TTRS, it's a slow day, you pack up waiting for a trip. You can relax at the back here until the next trip comes in. You go on my double palm for whatever reason, double palm is full, you fold long your rear seats, you have a bed. A wagon is something you have to own to understand the beauty of how versatile a wagon could be. It's like a car, but SUV in one. Now moving into the back seats, you don't get a lot. You don't get any rare USB cables, rare cigarette lighter, rare AC vents. It's a functional vehicle. Most that you see hard plastic and that is because it's made to be functional, long lasting, no soft touch materials all over the door to rip and your child rip it or cut it with the scissors, no. It's just meant to last. If you mash up hard plastic, something seriously wrong with you. I can attest to my field wagon, those hard plastics stand the test of time. They don't stain, they don't rip, they don't crack, the dashboard may get a bit of cracking in the older generation but that's about it. Up front, left and right, you have circle AC vents. I'm still unsure if they provide more air than the normal rectangle or square versions of them. But yeah, you have rounded AC vents. Below the AC vent, you have the standard controls found in most vehicles. Starting with the big blue one, that is obviously a start-stop button. To the right of that, within this rectangular thing here, you have your mirror controls. The L and the R determines which side of the mirror you are controlling, whether it's the left or the right, with this button at the bottom here. And the button to the top right controls the power windows. You push it in, the mirror is folding. Now it's going to stay pushed in once you pushed it. When you push it again, it's going to pop out and the mirrors are going to unfold. At the bottom of that, starting from the bottom left, you have your collision avoidance system. It's going to beep if you get close to another vehicle in front. To the right of that, you have a lane departure warning. It's not going to bring the vehicle back in lane. It's not like active lane keeper assist. It's just going to beep and let you know hey, you are drifting. To the top of that, you have your auto high beam. You push that and the lights will turn on to high beam. I will dim if it sees an oncoming car coming. And to the furthest right, you have your manual headlight adjustment. It's going to tilt the headlight up or down. This is useful if you are carrying load. If you are carrying load, you have the vehicle tends to slouch down and the front up. You don't want to blind oncoming drivers, plus you want to still see the road. So here you have your steering wheel. It has buttons only on the right hand side. Higher trim levels of this field wagon does have buttons on the left hand side as well. But this particular trim doesn't have it. Behind that you have your instrument cluster. As you can see it's all analog, standard needles and dials. To the bottom right you have a small screen that's going to show you things like fuel economy and other things related to your hybrid battery system. Along with other things like your fuel gauge and if you have any issues with your hybrid system it's going to show up there. Moving over to the left you have your infotainment system slash head unit slash deck whatever you want to call it. Below that you have your climate controls. You all know how this works already. This dial here operates the temperature. You turn it to the right the place gets hotter 
the girl complains you then turn it back to the left the place gets too cold she complains over to the left you have your fan dial and in the middle you have your standard controls like recirculate where you want the air to blow if you see your face see your face in your feet defog the glass along with some other smaller settings below that but behind the gear shifter you have a small pocket that you can place items when not in use then you have the actual gear shifter and you can tell that this vehicle is not a modern modern vehicle like from 2020 come up because you have the standard big tall gear lever like i said it's meant to be functional not stylistic it's never going to break trust me on that behind that you have these controls here you have your eco mode you have your ev mode your song off in case you don't want to hear the beep 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 and below that you have your traction control button in a Toyota feel of wagon, I don't know why you will ever want to turn this off, but it's there if you're feeling adventurous and feel like you're drifting a front wheel drive vehicle. Yeah, you can try it. And that's all the tech you get on the inside here. Yes, it's a glove box to the left there, but I don't think I have to open it to show you all what a glove box is. It's a reasonable size glove box. The inside really isn't bad looking, but it's also not super good looking. It's just one of those vehicles that are just there. Like I said, it's meant to be functional. Hard plastic, so you don't have to worry about stains and tears and things cracking and breaking apart functionality and durability up top you get the standard map lights you push one side it turns on you push the other side it turns on nothing too spectacular no it's not leds but it's an easy fix you can swap those bulbs out very very easily but that's about it for the interior here yeah? time to take it out on the road and see how the vehicle drives and see how this hybrid system works it always amazes me at how silent these vehicles have became you have to watch the rpm okay is the vehicle on it's on okay cool we're moving without that you just don't know now on the topic of loudness this vehicle doesn't have the normal cvt transmission like the k310 that the 141 had however this e cvt setup is equally as annoying you get on the accelerator pedal and all you hear is this Yeah, I just don't like CVTs. Whether it's the standard CVT or the electronic CVT slash ECVT, I don't like the fact that it holds one gear and you sound like you are always in the wrong gear while you are driving. I don't like it. Modern CVTs, however, have rectified that problem by simulating gear shifts. So it kind of gives the illusion of gear shifts, even though it's not actual gears, it's gear ratios. But in this generation, it just sounds like you're in the wrong gear. Now, while I understand that CVTs are more efficient because whatever gear ratio it's in, it's the optimal gear ratio for that speed, so you're sipping fuel, I don't like the sound. Let's take a listen to the engine to hear how the engine songs at idle. Now, because there are so many variations to these vehicles, and I don't get them with a manual, I had to reach out to my good buddy Jose over at Hybrid Solution Diagnostics just to confirm that it does in fact come with the 1NZ FXE engine. It's a 1.5 litre engine from Toyota. And the fact that it can be found in multiple Toyota hybrid vehicles means it's tried and proven. It has been tested. It's durable, it's long lasting once you take care of it. It's not particularly powerful. It will give you just about 80 horsepower, 55 kilowatts, and around 112 Newton meters, which is about 82 foot pounds of torque. So you're not going to be winning any drag races anytime soon, but it's reliable, which is most important. It's reliable and it sips fuel. Other than that, it drives like a regular Toyota Fila wagon. It isn't, like I said, particularly fast, but it also isn't really slow. It's just in the middle of an everyday vehicle. It's more geared towards fuel economy and practicality than speed. It's also pretty quiet when you're just driving regularly and not flowing it. All in all, it drives pretty similar to the feel of wagon that I know and own. It doesn't feel any heavier given the hybrid component of the vehicle now. It feels the same way. The engine drone when you floor it is a bit higher, I would say, than the non-hybrid version that I know. And other than that, yeah, it's practically the same. You hear a slight whine when you're slowing down because of the regen system. But other than that, it's a nice vehicle, practical, it will last you a very long time, plus a stay with her. 
So, you know, you're guaranteed to have a long-lasting vehicle on top of the fact that it doesn't have a lot of tech to go bad. So if you're in the market for a hybrid vehicle that's practical and it's a car, look at the Toyota Fila wagon, you might like it.